investors, and welcome to my YouTube channel, where I study the best investors and businesses from around the world. Today, we will be looking at the story of the venture capital company Sequoia Capital. When we think of investing greats, we normally think of Berkshire Hathaway, Bridgewater Associates, and Renaissance Technologies, but there's one business that keeps popping up in my mind, and that's Sequoia Capital. Sequoia Capital is an American venture capital firm headquartered in California and was founded in 1972. This firm focuses on technology investments. Since 1972, the, the firm has made over a thousand investments now worth in the trillions in public market value. You might know some of them as Airbnb, Zoom, Cisco, WhatsApp, DoorDash, Kayak, LinkedIn, PayPal, and Strava, to name just a few. But today, instead of talking about the groundbreaking companies in which they invest, Let's dive into Sequoia itself and explain the story of Sequoia Capital. Don Valentine, the son of a truck driver, founded the business in 1970s, and the former salesman was great at spotting great organizations in which to invest. He initially worked for a semiconductor manufacturer and began investing small amounts of money in some of the companies he was meeting. Not long after, Valentine was spotted by Capital Group, who staked him and allowed him to start his own venture fund, with three million in 1972. To find the next big thing, just look at Steve Jobs, who Valentine saw as promising. Despite describing him as an oddly smelling Ho Chi Minh look-alike, during the 70s and 80s, Valentine grew the business, hiring a small but hungry team of individuals around him. The firm participated in Apple's IPO and invested in the likes of Cisco, Oracle, Google, and Yahoo early, making significant gains. But by the mid-90s, the control of the company was passed to Doug Leone and Michael Moritz. Moritz, a former staff writer for Time Magazine and computer salesman, and Doug Leone, who arrived in New York in 1968 as an 11-year-old Italian immigrant. While struggling at school, Leone was working on a boat as a teenager, sweating like a pig during the summer job, and he recalls, I could look across and see all the kids of the country club swimming pool. The young guys were talking to the girls, and I was saying to myself, I can't wait until I meet you in the business world. You just made your big mistake letting me in. His ambition and hard work have got him to where he is today, and he's known for saying, a lot of what keeps me going is fear. With Sequoia boasting one of the finest investment track records in the world, you won't be surprised to find out that the partners hear over 200 pitches a month and the chances of success lie in around 1%. Although, if you do succeed, you're likely to have a verbal agreement in place of in just a few hours of your opening pitch. But the firm boasts of a 16.5% yearly rate of return to date. If you left $10,000 in their hands in 1970, you get close to $8 million today as a return. Part of Sequoia's charm running alongside their speed is that the partners will happily meet at rundown offices or low-end parts of town because they understand that often the next up-and-coming firms are trying to keep their costs down in a bid to make a profit. The dynamic of the company works well, with senior partners crashing out, allowing space for new ones to join to the Sequoia family. But despite its success in picking companies, Sequoia is not immune to failure. Their three biggest failures include, number one, the first mistake was Twitter. With the business given a chance of a 10% stake in the firm in 2007, when it was valued at just $20 million, but they suggested they wanted a 20-30% to 30 stake and lost out. Number two, the second mistake was Facebook. Sequoia made a mess of their investment with Sean Parker's business, and so when Mark Zuckerberg teamed up with Sean Parker, Zuckerberg decided to play a prank on Sequoia when he was invited to a funding meeting in 2004. Zuckerberg showed up late to a meeting wearing pajama bottoms to pitch his side hustle called Wirehog. Not only that, but he then began his presentation in entitled The Top 10 Reasons You Should Not Invest But Sequoia had the last laugh with Facebook agreeing to buy WhatsApp with Sequoia earning over $6 billion. 
thanks to their 40% ownership in the firm. Lastly, number three, the third mistake was Apple. Sequoia made the mistake of selling their Apple stock in 1979, just 18 months after they bought it. But these failures have helped the firm to adapt and reshape their methodology, not being so stubborn over percentages, holding to their winners for longer, and sometimes overpaying their companies that are set to change the world. They've now hired their first female partner, Jess Lee, in 2016, following a foolish comment made by Moritz in 2015, stating, There weren't many qualified female candidates due to American women not studying the sciences when they're 11 or 12, and the firm didn't want to lower their standards to hire women. Like I said, they learn from their mistakes. Despite those mistakes, many stakeholders that have interacted with the firm do leave positive feedback, like Elon Musk, who suggested that in 1999, when he was building PayPal, Sequoia wired him $5 million to begin building the business even before the lawyers had finished going over the documents. The house founders, Adi Tatarko and Alan Cohen, said the same. It's about not complicating things. As we touched on earlier, Sequoia aren't afraid of getting into the weeds helping companies like WhatsApp with Jim Goetz, uh, one of Sequoia partners, personally interviewing and hiring engineers as well as reassuring them that it was a great business to work for. The same happened with Stripe, with Morrison helping John Collison, the 23-year-old founder, to improve his pitch and rehearse it before going to meet with a large financial institution. That's another part of the Sequoia charm, is that they're a team of entrepreneurs who want to see great businesses succeed and will often offer to help with anything. Its culture and its people have generated a significant amount of success, but Sequoia still has a strategy when exploring new investments. After setting up Sequoia Capital China, India, and Israel, the business also holds a set of key principles through which they invest. These include these eight principles. Number one, finding huge markets and exploiting them early rather than creating new markets as a huge market implies consumer demand is already there. Number two, identifying sequential markets. For example, investing in semiconductor companies that can tag into Apple and Samsung's success. Number three, companies that are trying to be different. Number four, funding from tax-exempt institutions like U.S. foundations or sovereign wealth funds to help with liquidity by not having to pay tax. Number five, investing in companies with strong cash flow. Number six, partially funding businesses to help them grow and get to know them before fully committing, which helps to keep the risk down. Number seven, running the winners and cutting the losers, and number eight, telling stories that the common person will understand. Both Don Valentine and Michael Moritz understand that in order to grow some of the greatest ideas, you have to be able to sell a story. Don Valentine, who passed away in October 2019, was called one of the generation's leaders who forged Silicon Valley and chose the name Sequoia because it conveyed the longevity and strength of the tallest of the Redwoods. Sequoia partners have noted how humble Valentine was, especially someone who refrained from putting his own name on the business, but the legacy at Sequoia lives on, with further fundraising ongoing in order to invest in some of the greatest ideas the planet has ever seen, some of which may not even exist yet. So had you heard of Sequoia's story before? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the capital investment firms that you think have outperformed Sequoia. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this video, please share it with your friends and family. It'll help the channel a lot. Leave a comment in the comment section and your thoughts about the video and what company I should cover next.